Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about vocal room design. We've been building a lot of vocal rooms. I think we've done 18, 19 already in the last two, three, four years. So one of them's on our site, Brenda's uh, vocal room in San Diego. You can see that one. And basically, I want you to think of a, a vocal room as a miniature studio, because that's what it is. We've got to follow the same guidelines that we follow when we build a studio. Noise, noise, noise. That's the first thing we got to deal with, right? Because if we're recording voice, we don't have a lot of instruments. We don't have a lot of sources. So just as my voice is coming through now with the microphone 18 inches away from me, that is the product being produced. We don't have guitar. We don't have drums. So we have to really have a very low noise floor, a lot lower noise floor in the room than we have with, with instruments and bands and stuff like we have in a live room, even a studio. So the bottom line here is noise, noise, noise has to be our first consideration when we're building a vocal room. How do we quantify and qualify noise? We measure over seven days. We take three measurements over seven days. Why? Because you want to be able to work in your room any day you want, right? You don't want to say, well, I can't work in my room on Friday because it's too noisy. Well, you don't want to do that. So the creative urge strikes. You want to be able to go into your room and express the creativity that you've come up with. So you want to be restricted by noise. So when we design studios and vocal rooms, we always design for the worst case because then everything else falls into place, right? So if we get the biggest noise issues resolved first, then all the other stuff is secondary and we can figure it out. So just like in a studio, we got a barrier. So we're going to build a shell to keep the noise out. Shell's got nothing to do with the absorption and diffusion that goes inside the room. Completely separate structures, completely separate science. The goal to understanding the physics of both is in the way they overlap. Not how they're alike, but where they overlap in their differences. That's the key, and that's where people don't understand. So what's our next step after we get our noise figured out? How much energy are we going to have in the room? Are we going to have one, one vocalist? Are we going to have two? Are we going to have three? Then we got to go down another level to quantify. Male or female? Why that? Well, because male voices usually have a lower octave range. And lower octave range means we got to have wider distances in our room because the energy needs more distance to travel. So the bottom line here is all of these variables have to be taken into consideration. Room size, volume, number of sources, male or female, whatever you're doing in the room has to be quantified and qualified. You just have to do this from the beginning. Then you're not working uphill. You're not working up against problems that you should have thought of before you built it. And watch the Brenda video uh, in, in the San Diego project, and you'll get a good idea of what we went through there. That was on the 23rd floor of a building. So we had flight paths, we had garbage trucks and down below, and oh, all kinds of things. But we, we measured, we, took the, we did this time study, and we built the building, and you can see the results. She's very, very happy with the product. Another thing I want to uh, tell you guys that are building vocal rooms, use a variable acoustic format. Have the ability to change the room acoustic. Just like you have the ability to signal process digitally, well, you can do it in the analog domain too. You can control absorption and diffusion to affect the sound quality of your, your product, your voice. And uh, especially those of you that have the lower octave range, male or female, it doesn't make any difference. Diffusion is a wonderful technology to open that up, give it air and life and, and uh, value and presentation. Because most of the stuff I hear today, the, the audio tracks, especially with voice, they just sound like they're in a closet. You know, they're like muffled. You can't. There's no openness, there's no air, there's no realism to, to the recording. So that can be handled with a variable acoustic program. And that's kind of a new approach. A lot of people don't use that. They just use absorption in small rooms. But any questions on that? We've been using it for about six, seven years now, and the engineers just love it. So holler at us. We'll be able to help you with that. So remember, vocal room design, same as uh, studio design, just on a much smaller scale. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. 
And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.